area is going to form the medial wall. One part is upper thorax, upper rib cage area, upper ribs. Right? Plus, we know that from this anterior lateral area of the this rib cage area, serratus anterior muscle is going to originate. Isn't it? So you see this serratus anterior is going backside like this. From every rib cage area. It goes back. Downside of no, serratus anterior muscle is going from that area. So serratus anterior muscle plus upper rib cage area is going to form the medial wall of the antenna. Please remember that. Then after that, let us see the lateral wall. Lateral wall is formed of, we know that we have a greater tubercle here and we have a lesser tubercle here, right? And in between that, there is an internal tubercular sulcus. Inter inter tubercular sulcus. Sulcus. But the inter tubercular sulcus is also known as the bicepital groove or sulcus. Why we say it's a bicepital groove or sulcus? Who can tell me? Bicepital groove or sulcus? Why it is known as bicepital groove or sulcus? Heads of the biceps were tight pass through it. Which head? Long head of the biceps. Yes, he's right. So, long head of the biceps, we know that from the infraglenoid tubercle. Infraglenoid tubercle, this is very important in MCQs having come from this area. Okay. So, from the infraglenoid tubercle, long head of triceps brachii muscle goes down. But from the supraglenoid tubercle, long head of biceps brachii muscle goes down. And biceps from the, uh, so this one supraglenoid tubercle of the uh, supraglenoid tubercle of the greater cavity, that is actually this long head of bicep brachii muscle is crossing this glenoid mural joint. Okay? okay. That, must, uh, that crosses the glenoid mural joint and it passes through this sulcus or groove. Alright. So long head of bicep brachii muscle is going through this area and there is a, you know, sulcus. So from right from here, by this, by this, this uh, uh, long head of biceps muscle is going to carry on. Tendon is going to be here. Okay. So this is uh, long head of biceps brachii muscle. So uh, coming through this area, so that's how we say bicep will groove as well. Tendon of this biceps brachii muscle is coming through this area. All right. Short yes. It's not the short head. Okay. So long head. Alright. Short head is coming from the coracoid process. Okay. Short uh, coracoid process. Uh, you know this is uh, coracoid process is here. The short head of the, uh, the biceps bracket is coming from the coracoid process. Okay. Got it. That's why there is. Uh, the, uh, yeah. No, 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 we don't say like that. Let me tell you. I'm just saying that because why we say this intertubercular sulcus has a bicepital group because tendon of the long head of bicep brachial muscle is running through this area. Alright? That's why it has given, given the name that as well. Otherwise, it's a general name is intertubercular sulcus. Alright? But, <clears throat> short head of, because it's a bicep brachial muscle is a, uh, having a two headed muscle, right? So long head is coming from here and short head is coming from the coracoid process of this scapula. They go, both connect with each other and go down. And biceps brachial muscle is a muscle of the anterior compartment of the arm area, right? So now the thing is that here we are concerned with the lateral wall of the axilla, right now. Isn't it? Lateral wall of the axilla. So lateral wall of the axilla is actually formed of this intertubercular surface. So lateral wall is actually shaped it is a little bit of you know higher, little bit the crest is there, you know, that's why it forms as a wall. So lateral wall of the axilla is formed of intertubercular sulcus or also known as bicepital group. Some say bicepital group of that, that doesn't mean that oh it's wrong that we, we, we learned about that it was intertubercular sulcus. Okay, that's what I told you that these two names are the same thing. Alright. So, lateral wall of the axilla is formed of intertubercular sulcus, medial wall of the axilla is formed of the upper rib cage plus serratus anterior muscle. Alright, now coming to the posterior wall of the axilla. 
so we need to know posterior wall as well isn't it <coughs> so post <coughs> posterior wall of this uh, axilla is actually formed from the <coughs> the muscles which are at the posterior region of this area right so the muscles which are here is actually they are subclavius muscle right from this <coughs> The coastal surface of the scapula comes out the huge muscle, you know, and then covers this, you know, the, the lesser tuber. So here it is coming, that muscle. So subclavius muscle is here. Okay, then <coughs> we have teres minor muscle is here, latissimus dorsi muscle is here. All they are forming the posterior wall of this axilla. Okay, <laughs> then after that we need to do anterior wall. Anterior wall is formed of pectoralis major muscle. You know, anteriorly, then comes the pectoralis major muscle, pectoralis minor muscle, then subclavius muscle. Three muscles are there. There is one fascia, clavic pectoral fascia, we say. That fascia also is going running through this area. So, clavic pectoral fascia, you know, clavic pectoral fascia is a thin sheet, which is covering the anterior region of the anterior part. So, clavic pectoral fascia, then comes the pectoralis minor muscle, pectoralis minor muscle, and soft pelvis muscles, they are forming the anterior wall of the axilla. And posterior wall is formed of the sub subscapularis muscle, right? Then after that, we have right down, to roll down, we have those tears, minor, tears, minor muscle, that is the slurcy muscle. Okay, lateral wall was formed by the intertubular sulcus. And medial wall was formed by the upper rib cage area plus serratus anterior muscle. It's clear now. Now let us see in the axilla what structures we see then inside this axilla. Okay, if you do the cross sections of this axilla, then what we find is there is axillary sheath. Okay, there is axillary sheath. It's a thin sheath which is covering both structures in this area at the axilla. So here what we find is, we find axillary artery <coughs> running through this area, axillary artery is running through this area, alright, then we have a part of the brachial muscle, uh, sorry, brachial plexus, here what we find is cord level, you know, cord, both medial cord, lateral cord, you know, posterior cord are here, so both cord level are passing or flowing through this area, through the axilla. Alright, so what you find is medial cord will be fine, medial to the axillary artery. You know, lateral cord will be fine, lateral to the axillary artery. Alright, then we will find the posterior cord just posterior to the axillary artery. But the important thing here is that axillary vein, you know, axillary vein, that will not be inside this axillary. Yes. This is outside this axillary. You know, they might ask you the MCQ that you know inside the axillary sheet what are the structures required. The exception is axillary vein. Yeah. <laughs> this is the All right. So let us see here how the axillary artery runs through this axillary inlet, axillary area. All right. Let us see the <coughs> axillary artery. 